I've seen plenty of amazing tutorials for how to make a pirate shirt, historical shirt, whatever you'd like to call it, but not many on how to alter the actual pattern. Now, I learned how to make one of these bad boys in school and have since made several more, all differently styled, based from the same pattern. Luckily, as many of you know, these shirts are comprised completely of squares, so I'm going to show you what altering these squares do. I received this pattern from my sewing professor in university and have found what I love and what I like changing. Let's begin with the body. The distance from the shoulder notch to the bottom will be the length, while the width of your rectangle will be the width, or half the circumference of the shirt. A longer rectangle equals a longer shirt, where a wider rectangle equals a more voluminous shirt. This T-shape is your neck opening. The perpendicular line is for how much cleavage you'd like to show and for getting your head through. Then I actually choose to ignore the width of the slit and focus more on the distance from the shoulder notch to the neck opening. This is because the neckline gets gathered into the collar, so if the cut is bigger, you just have more to gather in. So if you want the shirt to slouch a certain way, the distance between the shoulder notch and where the slit ends is more important because it remains the same in the end. The collar is a rectangle that is folded in half then attached, so it's usually at least the length of your low neck measurement plus seam allowance. Then the width is double what you want the height to be. You can also choose to ignore the collar entirely and just cut a big old hole like I did on this shirt. You can then add a drawstring to gather or just add some lace and leave it alone. Moving on to the sleeves, the dimension, much like the body, determines the length and volume of the finished sleeve. The wristband also plays into the length, but I'll get into that later. The sleeve, not including the underarm gusset, then gets gathered between these two points on your body piece. This length determines your armhole opening. For my body size, I found that 6.5 inches or 13 in total is the best for me, but if you have bigger arms or want a bigger armhole, this is where you'd adjust that. You can also adjust the armhole in the size of the underarm gusset. Its purpose is to smooth the transition from arm to body to make the garment less T-shaped. Traditionally, it's about four to five inches squared. I prefer five, but don't let that stop you from doing what you want. The wristband should ideally fit your wrist and not be able to slide off the hand. These shirts have sleeves longer than one's arm to add to the puff, so the wristband is there to hold it in place. This particular pattern assumes the wristband gets placed on the bottom of the sleeve, creating a ruffle that is not its own separate piece. But don't let that stop you from doing that. I've attached my own straight cuff with great results. Just keep in mind that adding a cuff will make the sleeve longer because the original pattern sleeve length assumes that some of it will be part of the ruffle. Now I believe that's all of the important shapes and their purposes. Following the pattern exactly gets you this shirt here, neck ruffle included, while my alteration of the pattern gets you this shirt. Both lovely in their own way. I hope this helps and let me know what kind of shirt you make. Happy sewing!